Greetings, everyone. Today we are going to have a little discussion on the Fall 2006 Center Grove Global Campus Courses and talk a little bit about the expectations involved with taking a global campus course during the school year, a little bit of information about the seat time waiver that's offered, and provide a few ways for you to be able to contact me, Mr. Lamb, uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. So again, my name is Joseph Lamb, and I am the e-learning coach here at Center Grove High School. I've been doing it for the past two years. Prior to that, I was a biology and chemistry teacher in our early college program for the previous five years. I'm really excited to be here to talk about our program. It's a very unique program, and we'll just dive right in and get to it. Um, a little bit about our global campus program. Um, you know, we designed this program specifically to offer our students some choice, some flexibility in their learning opportunities. Um, we really felt like this was a niche that wasn't really filled by any of our other programs. Um, you know, online education is something that's very important nowadays, and as many students go off to college or go off to to careers. Um, they will have to have some form of online education or training. And so our goal is to prepare kids for what they will experience in the real world. And Global Campus takes care of that. Global Campus helps support that goal. Um, you know, as online education, it, it cultivates a lot of different pathways for students for choice and flexibility. And that's something that's very important to us. Um, we need to work to be able to teach our students and help them learn in new and innovative ways. And these online courses really help students think critically and work collaboratively. It also helps develop some self-motivation skills in many students as they are more self-paced, self-directed courses. They won't see a teacher every day in the Global Campus Program. What's unique about our program is that all of our courses are developed in-house. That is, our teachers develop them. We do not purchase content from outside of the school district. It is completely made by our teachers and taught by our teachers. And that's something that makes our program very, very unique and very special. Um, the three main parts of our mission, we want to emphasize real-world relevance. We want our assessments to reflect things that are actually happening in the real world, and they actually have to utilize and implement the technology that we have at Center Grove to create some type of real-world project. Um, you know, That's something that's very important to our program. We want to help develop meaningful relationships. Even though our courses are online, it is still absolutely essential that kids develop those powerful relationships between the student and teacher, as well as in between other students. The students do not are not alone in this course. They have an opportunity to collaborate with one another, work with their teacher, and create those meaningful and collaborative relationships with all people involved in the Global Campus Program. And lastly, we want to be able to remove barriers to learning. One of our major goals in the Global Campus Program is to increase student choice and increase the flexibility of when and where they take their courses. That's why we offer our global campus programs during the school year. Their course time, their class period, acts as kind of like an extra study hall where they can work on their global campus work or they can work on other activities that they may need to complete. Um, they're able to take courses that may not necessarily fit in their schedule previously. We were able to offer courses that we wouldn't normally be able to offer face-to-face -face due to you know, staffing constraints or scheduling issues. A little bit about the courses that we're offering. Um, this is just a, a kind of a short list of the seven courses that we are offering. Um, we have U.S. History with Mr. Timmons, Government with Mr. Hoover, Economics with Mr. Claude Felter, Meteorology with Mr. Weidman, Sociology with Mrs. Cullum, Music Theory with Mr. Torres, and Health with Mrs. T. Van. Um, logistics of the coursework, again, during the school year, the students actually meet in the Media Center during their global campus class and complete their work utilizing Canvas, which is our learning management system. Teachers do give deadlines and meet with the students as needed to have that support, but they're primarily working independently and on their own or in small groups of students. I also provide instructional support for the teachers as well as assistance to the Global Campus Program. Students who have a Global Campus class during first period, fifth, sixth, or tenth may be eligible for a seat time waiver, which allows the student to not have to be in the media center during that Global Campus class. It's a big incentive for kids, and um, a lot of our kids really utilize that to their advantage. A little bit about those procedures. Um, students who have completed the waiver forms, and I sent those home last week, got a big stack of them if you need them, just let me know, um, and have their global campus class during periods 1, 5, 6, or 10, and also have an 80% or higher in the class earn a seat time waiver. That means that the students don't have to be at school during that period only, so students can come into school at 9 o'clock in the morning. They don't have to come to that first period class or they can leave early. They would just need to sign out of the attendance office. 
Now, these seat time waivers can be taken away if they don't maintain 80% or for discipline reasons. I check the grades three times a semester. So those are the checkpoints. I typically don't grant or take away seat time waivers any time in between those simply for logistical reasons. So those three times a semester, that's when I'm looking to check for that 80%. Students who lose the waiver can report to school normally. They can also earn it back as well if they have above an 80% at the particular checkpoint. If a student doesn't know if they've earned a waiver, they need to ask me. That's something that's very important. We do not want students leaving school early um, that aren't eligible for a seat time waiver and vice versa. Um, we're very adamant that students follow these rules. Uh, we do not want students to be truant. We don't want students to not be in the building if they're supposed to. Um, we want to make sure that all students are here if that's what's required of them. Um, just a few of the rules, periods 1 through 6. If you have a seat time waiver, you don't need to report until 9 a.m. Um, students will come to school and report to second period. If they arrive before 9 a.m., they need to report to the media center. Periods 5 and 10 can leave at 112, but they have to sign out at the attendance office. And these seat time waivers will start Monday, August 22nd, so I'll send out an email message, and I will send out little paper notes as well, making sure that every student knows whether they have earned the seat time waiver or have not. That's just a little bit about our global campus program. Again, we offer quite a few different courses, um, so it, it's a really unique opportunity, and I'm really looking forward to uh, working with your kids and working with you to ensure that this program continues to be as successful as it has been in the past. My contact information is listed on the screen, and if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.